When you do relationship astrology, the first thing you do is you take your birthday or the other person's birthday and you look at your planets versus their planets. And it's common for people to say, well, how does a Libra get along with a Pisces or something like that? Or how come I'm with a Pisces, you know? Isn't that water sign and I'm an air sign? Well, there are several rules to the matter. First of all, yes, fire loves fire, air loves air, earth loves earth. You can also think of it as if you're a fire sign and you're going out with an earth sign, they can throw a little dirt on your sun sometimes. So they can say, hey, stop being so fiery, get down to earth, right? Or if you're an air sign and you're going out with an earth sign, the earth sign may say, hey, stop being so lofty in your ideas. Why don't you come down to earth? Um, and you may say to them, why don't you lighten up and, and catch up here, up in the thought department? You're too practical, you're too down to earth. So you can have those basic compatibility problems. But beyond the sun, your sun and their sun, there's the moon, Mercury, Venus. Mercury, by the way, is the planet that's associated with communication. So it's very important that your Mercury's are well aspected. And there are rules for marriage partners too. Uh, for example, the ruler of your ascendant or your seventh house of marriage should be nicely aspecting the other person's ruler of ascendant or house of marriage. This can show that it's kind of meant to be that you're together for a long period of time. Some relationships begin and there are signs that it's a, a quickie, you know, just in and out like a little bit of fun or a little bit of lesson. Other ones have a, a longer duration and a lot more stability. And you'll see couples a lot of time that are, have a lot of instability and still struggle to maintain the relationship. So one thing I do is I look at their planets with your planets and then I marry the planets together. It's called a composite chart. There is a book written on composite chart. Actually, I think we need another one soon. Um, there's two ways to marry them. This is a, called uh, Planets in Composite by Robert Hand. But there's two ways to marry a chart. One is that you take your birthday and their birthday and you find uh, the midpoint in, in place and time. If somebody's born in Chicago, um, you know, January 1st and the other per person is born December 1st in uh, Miami, you find the middle point between Chicago and Miami and also the, the date between the two. That's called a Davison chart for all of you advanced astrologers. Um, the other way to do it is you take your Aries sun and their Libra sun and you find the midpoint, you know, which would be a Cancer sun and you do it for all the planets. You marry them and, and then divide them. So this is what a composite chart looks like and here I have a Melanie Griffith who is a Leo with Antonio Banderas who is a Leo. So obviously their composite chart has a sun in Leo and it sits with the planet Uranus. So this would ex say a very exciting relationship is one of the things it would say. They both have the same Venus in Virgo, by the way, too. So Venus remains in Virgo. To have the sun, the composite sun, in the fifth house of romance in children is one of the best places to have the sun. Another place for romance or marriage is the seventh house because this is the house of marriage or the eleventh house because that's the house of friendship and it shows a good friendship is the basis of the uh, relationship itself. So, um, the other thing that you can see about composite charts is up in the sky where the planets are going around in the sky, uh, they affect the, the couple as a whole. So this is the chart of a couple here. Now, this is how their synastry grid looks. So what you have, you'll see, is a situation where Melody is going across and Antonio is going down, okay? And one of the things you see is Mars is conjunct Mars, um, sorry, Mars is conjunct Venus. And this is the number one sexual compatibility between a couple. It's not the only way to see it, but it's the number one way. It means like the yin and the yang. It's, it's like a perfect union. Another thing I look at are the nodal connections here. And if you look over here, we'll see that the north node it's Antonio's north node is on her whoop, Mercury and Venus. So it means this is the direction to go into. And um, so you, you look and you see how many squares. All the squares are going to be the challenges in a relationship. And of course, all the trines are the easy flows. Both having the sun conjunct sun means that you're extremely compatible. You can anticipate each other's mood. And the moon-sun opposition or conjunction is also the number one sign of a man and a woman union together. So they have two of the best things you can possibly have for a relationship, and they've been together for a long time so far. Now let me show you a, a more difficult composite horoscope. This is Mia Farrow and Woody Allen. 
when you marry the two charts together, what you get to see here is a grand cross, and it's not it's not an easy one. First of all, it has Mars um, opposed to the planet Pluto, so it shows power struggles within the relationship because it comes from the seventh. I'm sorry, yes, the seventh house down to the second house. It could even be about money. And also it shows Saturn and Jupiter at odds with this. So it's like Sun, uh, I'm sorry, Mars square to Saturn, Mars square to Jupiter. It's just difficult. It shows a lot of stress in this relationship. So it's something I wouldn't really bother to go for. <laughs> something that you want to stay away from. What you want to bring in is something what like Liz Taylor had with Richard Burton. I mean, I know that for the most part it was a little bit rocky but look at this stellium later on I'm going to show you David Bowie and Iman and they have a similar stellium when you see this kind of a lineup between two people when you marry the charts together and everything's falling in the fifth and sixth house here whoa this is uh, Venus the planet of love with Mercury we have loving communication we have lots to talk about the Sun sits with the North Node the direction to go into the Mars is there Saturn's there Uranus you, you know you never saw such a a lineup like this, at least I haven't since David and uh, Iman actually. Um, it's all good for the fifth house too. If you have the sun in the fifth house, it shows that you're natural lovers.